Hey listeners, if you're a fan of shocking true crime podcasts, I have your next obsession for you. It's called Families Who Killed the Donut Shop Murders. It's the story about the McQuarries, a family who terrorized small town America, committing murders, robberies, abductions, and general mayhem everywhere they went. Led by the criminal duo of Sherman and his son-in-law, Carl, this disturbed family targeted people working in donut shops. On Families Who Kill the Donut Shop Murders, you'll hear the details of their crime spree for the first time from one of the McCrary's and the detective who tracked them across the country as they left death and destruction in their wake. I'm about to play a brief preview of the show, but while you're listening, make sure to follow Families Who Kill on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, or you can binge all six episodes ad-free when you subscribe to Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts or the Wondery app. I thought I've gotten Sherman off this kidnap kick, and, you know, I don't have to worry about that. So this particular night, I'm not even thinking. If I'm even thinking right, I think. I might have hesitated, but I wasn't thinking like I should have been. And uh, it's kind of raining, unless, like I say, like I say, I created this situation uh, unconsciously. The store itself sits kind of out of the way. Nothing around it is open. I stopped. I went in to get some cigarettes. And the thought struck me when I walked through the door. She was in there by herself. I looked around, and there comes Sherman through the door. And I just looked around, and I pulled out my gun. And uh, she looked and started laughing. I told her, this ain't no toy, girl. And she looked a hell of a lot younger than she was. I think she was about 25 years old. And at that time, there ain't no way she looked over 25. Well, she was a hippier than the day is long. And she's laughing like hell. Now I told her, now this ain't no toy. She said, I know it's not a toy. She said, you know, she said, when you drove up, she said, I thought in my mind you were gonna rob me. And I said, is that right? So I said, let's not sit around here all night talking about it then. So she put all the money in a sack, you know, and Sherman tells her, get your coat. She looked around at him and she said, okay. She walked out the door and in the car we got. Well, I don't know what Sherman was thinking, but this is one of the few times I've ever seen him laugh. Uh, I've seen him laugh a few other times, but this ain't no time to be laughing. And it seems he was laughing at the wrong time, but he was laughing going to the car. He said, I don't believe it. I just don't believe it. And uh, she just opened the door and jumped in, you know, and we rattled off 90 miles an hour, you know. And uh, she put her hand in her purse. She comes up with a couple of joints. I don't know, well, what I'll do. Well, she lit up a joint. She's driving along, and she's getting higher than a Georgia pine. Sherman's sitting there shaking his head, you know. This is the one time, I think, that it's getting to him because she was so non-concerned about the whole damn thing. And uh, she asked me, you know, she said, you married? I said, no. She asked Sherman, you married? He said, no. No, he said. So we're driving along and talking, you know, and we're getting near Washington. So we went on across into Washington, back up to the other side of, uh, of Woodland, back up in the mountains. I don't know, I fully believe I didn't know whether Sherman was thinking about shooting her or not. Uh, she was sitting in the car and me and, and Sherman was out standing out there talking and he said, what do you think? And I told him, we got to cool it. I think she's cool. I said, she'll go walking off this mountain and ain't nobody going to pay it to any attention to her. He says, that's what I was thinking too. So we sit around there for a few minutes talking and I went to the back seat, I opened the back door and I had my gun. And Sherman was standing in front of the car and I didn't know he had his gun under his arm and he was just standing there like that. And uh, she's standing between us Sherman looked at me and said, nope, just can't do it. After we 
killed the girls. We never talked about it. He said nothing and rode along in the car and just tried to ignore it and head back into town. You just heard a preview of Families Who Kill, the Donut Shop Murders. New episodes are available wherever you listen to podcasts, or you can binge the entire series early and ad-free when you subscribe to Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts or the Wondery app.